Welcome back to Brands Bites, the podcast that brings you bite-sized invites, invites, brings you bite-sized insights into new tech and gadgets every day. Starting with the main topics here, we have Windows 11 should be on mobile phones as an operating system. Samsung is yelling at engineers because they're using ChatGPT to code uh, core code. And Chipotle is making brand new all electric stores. So jumping straight in here, we have Windows 11 mobile is everything a phone operating system should be. And this really, really excites me here. As you can see, they have a blue screen of death here. Very, very nice touch. This is just a concept. But what I wanted to talk about is the main problem with Windows phones originally is, well, the operating system was not super amazing, right? Like it wasn't great. The tile system was kind of cool, but not. it didn't offer the functionality that you expect from your phone. This, however, takes what kind of looks like a version of Android and brings the Windows start menu to a mobile device. Now, this actually looks super cool. This would be a cool concept to see. They'd have to support some version of you know the Google Play Store or something, at least at first, because if you only have, even if they take 5% of the market, 5% is not going to convince a lot of app developers to want to make their apps for these devices, which is one of the biggest problems Windows phones had in the first place is no one was making their stuff for it. So a lot of apps that you expect to have or use just weren't there. This, however, if they did a design like this and they did implement with some form of Android, but I like the Windows Start menu. I think the Windows 11 Start menu is actually, it's not great on desktop, but in terms of for a phone, could actually be a pretty cool start menu. And this concept here looks pretty great. I mean, it looks extremely similar to Android because, again, it's a concept. But this could have, like, chat GPT built in. Windows already has quite a few different pretty great, like, focused assists and things like that, power-saving modes that would make it a pretty cool operating system to have as a mobile device. Widgets as well. I mean, you could even do more... It could feel more like a desktop on a phone. The blue screen again, again, a nice touch here. This is just a cool concept. It would be great to see Microsoft pursue this further and actually make a device that people would want to buy because it would be nice to have someone else other than Apple and Google, even if that means they use Google stuff for a little while and then you know, if they get a big enough market share with their devices, kind of pull into their own thing or something of that nature, it would just be sick to see. And again, with something like ChatGPT built into a device like this, the, the endless possibilities that could really lead to, if done correctly, would be sick. And I'd love to see it at some point, hopefully in the future here. Then we have Samsung, whose software engineers are busted for pasting proprietary code into ChatGPT. And if you didn't know, everything on ChatGPT at the moment is used to train it. So proprietary code is then part of its knowledge base, which is a kind of massive issue. But at the same time, if you were a developer and you had access to something that could go through your lines of code and find the bug that you're having or why it's not working and fix it, why wouldn't you use that resource? So maybe the real question here is, an employee probably shouldn't be doing this, though I'm guessing there's way more than just Samsung employees doing this. But... With that, they should probably do something in the nature of license this software to keep their code in-house, but also allow people to use it, because this is going to be the future of coding, is using something like this to jumpstart, to proofread, to whatever you need it to do to make sure your code is good. And I don't think we're going to see this stop. Now, we also have here, after a third employee asked the AI model to summarize meeting notes, Samsung executives stepped in. The company limited each employee's prompt to ChatGPT to 1,024 bytes. Just three work weeks earlier, Samsung had lifted its ban on employees using ChatGPT over concerns around this issue. Again, this is just going to start happening, and they're going to have to find a better way to manage it than not allowing employees and also not getting mad at employees for doing this. And it... I, again, there's going to be way more companies doing this. And since we got the pop-up to show up, let's just move on. This this is upsetting for me. Tesla's Cybertruck is shown with new steel wheels and testing equipment. 
Uh, those steel wheels look like hot trash. Please don't actually put those on your Cybertruck. I can't believe that they're driving it around with those. And I really hope those never make it on the street. I actually think the original wheels, the like super sci-fi wheels, look pretty great. Not these. I mean, these could be worse. Let's not let's not say they're that bad, but they could be much worse. This also is someone's just testing it out, running it through tests, trying different wheels, different rims, just doing things. And Tesla's pretty good at not spending any money on advertisement. But instead, you do weird things like this in public and let the news take care of it for you, which works extremely well for them. And DP Review will actually have some archives. So they received a lot of questions about what's next for the site. They've heard concerns about losing the content, the 25 years worth of data for photographers, videographers to go through and check, you know, how does it compare to this, to that, compare. I mean, there's a lot of information that's extremely valuable to people with a profession in video or photography or audio, all of that stuff. Now, what's going to happen here, the site's content will remain online after the site shuts down on April 10th. No comment on how long, but at least it will be staying up as an archive for a while. And hopefully it'll give more time for like the internet archive to archive all of the content on there. I think that's I think that's kind of what they're doing here because I think enough people got upset, but at least it's going to have some more time to do that because this is, this is information that's going to suck that it's not getting updated anymore. And hopefully, hopefully at least can be archived so that it's available still to the people that want to use it and be able to go through and, you know, show these things off. Next up, we have our, one of our other headline topics here. So Chipotle reveals all electric wind and solar powered restaurants. These aren't just concepts. These are actually going to be going on. That'll be relying on, you know, alternative energy to power its stove grills and even electric charging ports on site and a ton more. So many other places have announced big pushes to incorporate electric vehicle charging into their stores, their restaurants to help, People charge their vehicles as well as draw customers to them. Chipotle is not going to be left out on that, including Subway, 7-Eleven, and Walmart. All of them have announced these big pushes to do that, which is fantastic to see because this charging network is going to have to be built out. And I'm going to mention this every single time we talk about electric vehicles and charging. It also needs to be standardized. So hopefully they will standardize it to an extent or work with Tesla or hopefully more companies will be willing to work with Tesla to standardize Tesla's because it seems to be the best and Tesla's been the most open with other companies so far. We'll have to see. So they've had opened two new restaurants in what they're calling the responsible restaurant design feature. So far, one in Virginia, one in Jacksonville, Florida, and a third is slated to open in Castle Rock, Colorado. Now, the highlights include the electric cooking equipment to replace their gas variants, rooftop solar panels, and heat pumps for uh, water heaters, which is a pretty sick way to do it. Nothing's going to waste in these stores, which is great, especially in a big chain like this is a great way to help push everyone else to this point. So Chipotle is aiming to use all electric equipment and at least some of its elements of its new design at more than 100 locations it plans to open in 2024. And Chipotle's goal is also to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions by 50% by 2023 from 2019 levels. The company also said Tuesday that it is planning to offer more vegetarian and vegan menu items while purchasing 36.4 million pounds of local produce this year. Sweet to see. I'm so glad that they're making a push like this. If we're really going to start pushing electric cars this hard then places like this are going to have to offer chargers. Even if you can't charge there the whole time, even if you only get like, you can only charge for 20 minutes while you're here. We only expect you to be here for 20 to a half hours. So like that's as long as you're able to charge. It's for free. It's part of your meal. Still going to need the infrastructure for charging because at the end of the day, we're going to need so many more chargers than we were going to need gas stations because it just takes longer to charge vehicles at the moment. And that's going to be needed until either the batteries get a humongous range or no one's driving cars anyways, and it won't matter. But for now, at least they're doing this. It's a great step forward, and I'm enjoying seeing it. Google TV adds even more free TV to its live guide. So they're 
giving away about 800 more channels for free on TV in one place. Now, let's be kind of clear here. I don't know how many of these channels you're going to actually want, but you'll have access to them. So Google's doing that, and I don't really have anything else to say about that. I don't know why I even put this in here. It's not interesting to me. Other than it kind of sucks. They're adding it to Google TV. So I don't think it's coming to YouTube TV. It's a Google TV. I can't remember if that's whatever the heck is going on. But Google TV is also seeing the addition of Tubi, Plex, and Haystack News to its live tab, which is arguably a bigger deal than these 800 free channels. Things like Plex and Tubi having access to your content on demand through the Google TV app is a great way to access, you know, if you archive some Blu-rays that you owned and stuff like that. Even just family videos, this is quick, easy access to those things using software like Plex or Tubi. Awesome. Just good job, Google. Updating stuff is great. Second to last here, we have a Tesla Model X sinks in a river and then sells for 24000 the next day. This isn't super surprising to me, to be completely honest. So this did slide into the water while nobody was inside, which is kind of a wild thing to say. Now, the blue Model X, you know, whatever. Who, how do you just let it slide into the river? No one really knows here. We got a few different images to look through of them towing it out. Uh, the reason I think this would probably sell still is because getting replacement parts for Teslas is extremely hard. And there's quite a few things that probably weren't damaged. I mean, it's possible the battery wasn't damaged for one, which would be worth about that anyways. And for two, we just have... A pretty highly sought after vehicle that wouldn't be that hard to get some parts salvaged off of that. Who really knows though? It's just it's wild to think that it sold for twenty four thousand still. I mean, I get it's a couple hundred thousand dollar vehicle, but nonetheless, to get that kind of return is kind of sick. Uh, yeah, there just there must be something salvageable. Could you imagine your Model X? You're like, ah, oh, 130 grand just fell in the river. I guess it's done. Never see that again. And then you pull it out and you're like, oh, I can get 24K back still. <laughs> like, no other car could you do that with. And, I mean, this looks weird. I'm guessing maybe you could salvage some of the brakes, hinges, maybe the seats even, if you really got, got to scrubbing. Cameras could maybe be salvaged. It depends on how powered on all this stuff was when it went in, if it was... I mean, if the car was water resistant enough, if it wasn't deep enough and it was totally fine, very low likelihood, but one of the options I could see being why they're trying to salvage it. And lastly here, just something cool I thought I'd share because I was scrolling around on the internet and got sidetracked and all of a sudden I'm looking at the James Webb telescope and then articles about that and I'm doing research and then I come across this article uh, that's a few days old, but it's actually Uranus and showing, you know, some of the rings around yours. And it's pretty sweet to see. I enjoy seeing these space photos because it's kind of wild. Now, this was captured on February 6th, 2023. And you can actually see all the rings here, which is kind of a cool photo. I, You don't get to see the rings of Uranus that often. So it's just cool to see. I love seeing space stuff. Like, I would totally just fly up there. Like if they were like, yo, you want to go on this rocket? I'd be like, I'm out of here. So they know they have 13 rings. There's 11 visible in this photo. And that's pretty sweet that we're getting these photos back. I kind of wonder how long it takes these to, you know, get back. Like how long do these photos actually take to send back here? Or, I mean, I know we're using the telescope, but how long does it take to process these? These have to be massive photos to process. And take forever. I mean, trying to track something like this would be just wild. But that's a picture. Of, I mean, that's just a picture of your anus. And it's pretty cool. And with that said, I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching this episode of Brands Bites. If you enjoyed it, let me know down below in the comment section or leave a voice memo on Anchor. I don't know if you can do that on Spotify, but you can always check it out on YouTube and leave comments there. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know. What do you think about those Tesla Cybertruck wheels? Crazy looking things that I would never buy. And with that said, I am logging out of the simulation and I'll catch you in the next one.